Mornings. Carolina with Greg T in the morning. On 103.5 KTU. All right, so guys, we got Niall Horn in studio with us. This is very good. Uh, so let me, get, you know, let's learn a little bit about you. Hello. For instance, Niall. Break it down here. Now, my middle name is John. Yeah. Does Niall Horn have a middle name? James. James. Yeah. And now, where did you get the name from? James is for, apparently short for Seamus. Okay. Don't know where that came from. So nobody uh, in your family? My granddad is called Seamus. Ah. And then, and then they shortened it to James, and then that's where I got James. There you go. There you go. Where does John come from? Well, I, from uh, my my grandfather's name was John. Well, look at us. And then then my father's name was was John. Right. So then when I was born, my mother was like, "You're gonna be Greg John T." Right. That, that, that's yeah. how it works. So right. that's right. Now, okay. Now let's go back. Let's go way back when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Peanut butter and jelly? No. Really? Not a thing, really, in, in in Ireland. It's very American, that. You're kidding me. Yeah, yeah. I had sure. no idea. I love peanut butter. Peanut butter jelly sandwich is like a very American thing. Really? Yeah. So when when did you finally have your first peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Oh, I'd say probably 10 years ago. Really? Yeah, and it was... It's very good. Cr now, do you do bread with the crust on or crust, crust off? off. Crust, crust off. off. Yeah. That's a big yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, a big deal. Yeah. All right, now. I'm a child. <laughs> <laughs> what about, now, here in America, big game, right. cornhole. Are right. you into cornhole? Is cornhole where you throw the sand sack thing? That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. So you like yeah, cornhole? Yeah, yeah. Very, very much, All right. Very much so. Not very good at it. That's okay. Love to play. All right. Like most things. I would imagine this is what people are doing when they're, you know, pep rally, when they're doing, what do they call it? Not a pep rally. When they're doing the uh, tailgating. Uh, tailgating. Right. In your parking lot before yeah. your show, they're doing cornhole. Yes. We're going to, that's what we're going to get everyone to do on tour. <laughs> Everyone's going to play cornhole. <laughs> that's great. All right. Well, listen, I'm glad that you, you spent some fun time with us just to answer some really fun questions. Yeah. But the real, the real reason why you're here is that you have a new album coming out yep. and you've got the new single Heaven, which is out. Yep. Uh, and, uh, can we dive into a little bit about the voice as well? Yes. I would love to know about that. Um, but let's start with the album. So new album is due out. So I like to ask some of the artists, you know, like how much how much say do you have on which songs actually make the cut and which ones do not? All of the say, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I um yeah, I guess it's my record until they hand it over to the label, I guess, okay. <laughs> I guess you know, and then and they've put all their, their campaign together and then when the when it's released, then it's the fans. But yeah, so up until a certain point, it's 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 very much mine and the people who produced it and, and wrote it with me. Um, yeah, so we're well, I'm feeling really good about this one. This one's um, the most confident I've probably felt um, in the quality of music. Um, whether the people agree now is a different story. <laughs> but <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah. Well, you know, I I I always envision. So you have all those all those songs on the album. It's all ready to go. Yeah. And many artists have all said, you know, I can't pick one. That's my favorite. Yeah. But there's got to be one or two that kind of, you know, mean more to you. Yeah, yeah. You sure. know that, or even even some of us. I mean, there might be a song like, for instance, Heaven, right? So Heaven becomes a smash. Yeah. But maybe there's another song on there that doesn't become a smash, but it might mean mean more to you. Does that ever happen? Yeah, all the time. There's like, a lot of time. Yeah, actually, yeah, just all the time. It, it does happen. Like, there's the, the time you wrote it, how you were feeling, how, like, a lot of time when it means a lot, you wrote it fast. Right. Like, I find that with the, the songs that mean the most, I write really quickly because mm -hmm. I know exactly what to say. Yeah. So you just have to, like, blurt it out and it happens. What's what's a good writing session? Like, like paint a paint picture mm. of what a writing <laughs> session is like for you. Um, they come in different shapes and sizes. Like um, the 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 first song I wrote for the record was just me during lockdown in my living room okay. on the piano. Yeah, and just singing along, humming along. Then words, you know, you blah 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 blah, blah and then they become words, and then up, out and over you've got a song. Or if I, I like, we do set up sessions where I get like my producer and a writer maybe to come in and we'll write together, and it'll be in LA somewhere in the studio and we go in at noon and we sit down and we get the instruments out or yeah. someone will have an idea or I'll have a concept and we'll talk through that for a second and then someone will start singing a melody and that becomes words. Yeah, it yeah. all kind of comes in different, depends what's going on, but generally I, do, I like to have the music first. Yeah, no, I wanted to say, like, is there someone that you trust that you mm. can bounce these ideas off? And I guess you said there's a, a yeah. producer of some sort, a friend of yours that you yeah. might bounce those ideas off of. Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've got, like, John Ryan and Joel Little and then Amy Allen, who's a good friend of mine, an amazing songwriter. She, um, her and I have, like, even before, weeks before we go to write, we'll be texting and yeah. just be like, I've got this, like, idea. Could you, like spin a story out yeah, of this yeah. uh, help me with it I'm struggling to see where it 
it's a good story, but how do I get it into a song? And um, it's about, yeah, it's about having that open book with whoever you're working with. Because mm -hmm. it's very, I've done sessions where you walk into a room and you don't really know the person. Yeah. And it's, it's like, it's like anytime you walk into a room and you don't know anyone. It's like, it's a bit awkward, a bit awkward. Yeah. Just like, and then you're trying to tell them your life story. So it's good that you know the people that you're writing with. That's why I've never really had a massive group of people that I've worked with. I've always kept it like to five, six max. Yeah. yeah. How, well, is it difficult for you the night before when you know that literally everybody now is going to, he's going to hear this album. Yeah. They're all going to know the words that you put into, you know, into music. Mm -hmm. So they're going to know so much more about you now. Is, yeah. does that, is that nerve wracking a little bit slightly? Um, yeah. Well, I think the release of music in general is, I think, it's the biggest cliche I'm sure every artist that's ever walked in here has said that to you yeah. that like it's it is horrible because you you like it right the people you work with like it everyone is like all on board and then you just have to hope that the fans get it and maybe you get some new fans and yeah. the radio plays it and all of that nervous energy comes into play when you're releasing music but this time I feel like I've written songs for me that sound like they're written for the people like mm -hmm. they're 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 big thoughts that will, I hope people will be able to like attach to something in their, in their lives. Is it good to always <clears throat> just surround yourself with a lot of, you know, yes people, or do you appreciate yeah. someone that actually will say, you know what? I kind of don't like that line when you're writing. I, I, I would think that that's a be that's benefit to, to the writer mm. that someone may not like it. And then you can actually ask them, well, what didn't you like about it? And then go from there. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm, I'm, we're all, Anyway, any, anyone I even play music to, I want like right. truth and honesty. That, that could be someone at the label. That could be, you know, my friend. That could yeah. be anyone. Um, but yeah, when we're in the room and writing, yeah, you know, we have to be honest. Like, mm -hmm. and everyone, to be fair, we've all got like a a good gauge on it. Like these people that I work with are like sure, Grammy winning producers, <laughs> right, 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 and writers. Yeah. So, um, but it's good that, that somebody's going to be there and say, you know what, I know that you love it, but trust mm -hmm. me on this one, I don't think this one really works. Yeah. You know, and that's got to be, you know, they've got to, of course, earn that right to be yeah. able to even, you know, say that and speak up because we are talking about a multi-million dollar project here. Yeah. No. You know, so they've got to be right and you've got to be able to trust them. Yeah, no, for sure. That's the, the, it's the most important part about being yeah. able to, like, have have an open, open dialogue. Just because I'm the artist doesn't mean that I, like, I want people to be honest. Yeah. Like, I, they have my best interests, too. You know, they don't want me to be releasing or saying a certain thing. Of whatever. course. Yeah. And now, are there other better songs, other songs, I shouldn't say better, are there other, other songs that, that uh, play better overseas than they do here? Like, when you do a concert somewhere else, are you like, oh, I gotta play this one song because yeah. they love it. But in America, we may not really be familiar with it. Obviously, like, sometimes, like, I'll go to, the, like, just say a random, let's say a random country, uh, Belgium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, like, track number 10 from the album might yeah. have been, like, the best their biggest song or something like and it's so it is crazy sometimes especially when you tour europe mm -hmm. because you when you tour europe you're waking up in a different country with a different culture with a different language right. every day right it's which is crazy in, in itself and then you get on stage and s certain countries are attracted to different types of song or right. whatever um maybe some some places in asia maybe like, yeah, like a you, ballad or right like you know you've got to play a certain song because you know that audience is going to eat that up mm. but then when you when you come here you're kind of like ah let, let's leave that one off but and that's yeah. got to be weird as well yeah no it's it's it is you have to have like a rolling set list yeah. really like you know things go in and out yeah and i think that's what i'll be doing more so on the next tour that's cool is making sure that i keep it open and and because we also we i can probably go to the label and ask for like analytics on what songs go, <laughs> do well in what these countries. days you probably can these, i would guarantee <laughs> it these days they have that yeah so okay so 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 heaven is the first single mm. so tell me a little bit about heaven and then yeah. you know i want to dive into the voice and other things but mm -hmm. so tell me about heaven and what it means to you or how that came about yeah heaven heaven so the show is the album title as we said mm -hmm. and the show kind of set like is a, a metaphor for life yeah effectively because during the pandemic, I wrote the album, and mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a show. There wasn't much to do during the pandemic. I, I fixed my house on the inside. I learned how to. I was going to YouTube. I'm like, how do I hang wallpaper? <laughs> how do I do these things? So you're writing, which is great. Okay, so <laughs> and um, the show basically then heaven was a song that came off that concept, and I was kind of like, I've always been one of those people that tries to like live in for now yeah. and not like look too far into the future. So I, it's kind of one of those songs that. The chorus basically says, God only knows where this could go because none of us know what's going to happen. Right. So just enjoy it for now and not like try and conform to what society tells you. I get to a period in my life where, you know, you're late 20s, going into your 30s. Yeah. People are asking questions. When are you doing this? When are you doing that? And sure. I'm just I'm just kind of like, 
You live your life. Don't worry about me for a second. I, I, I get it. Right. You have a little reflection on, on what you're, what's going on in your life mm. and where you're headed and what's going. I guess you're right. You know, it does. You do get to a point where you do some self-reflection on what's going yeah. on. Yeah. I guess that it's a, and the, the pandemic was good and bad for that because it was you were living in there. Yeah, right. A lot. No, I, I totally. You're actually right. <laughs> you can go a little stir crazy up there yeah, yeah. if you don't get out. Yeah. Is there a song that that you love on the album that you you don't know if it's going to be a hit, but you still are passionate about that one song? Like you put it on the album for a reason. It may not be radio friendly, yeah. but you still love it. What might that song be? Yeah, there's a couple. There's there's. Oh, I can't name tracks just yet, but there's a couple of like more okay. ballady ones. Okay. Um, right, that, that are close to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, like that are really, really. I really want to say what they are now because <laughs> we're so close. But um, yeah, no, there's a couple of balladed kind of songs. Okay. That are some of my favorite things I've ever written. And all like, right. It's, it's, it's usually, like I get after mixing and listening to the thing all the time. Yeah. I get bored of them, but I'm not. I'm not bored just yet. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm got still, you. I'm still listening to the record. Good. So you're going to be on The Voice, which mm-hmm. is unbelievable, and mm-hmm. everybody loves The Voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so tell me about that experience. Yeah, I know. It, it's, been, it's been so fun. It kind of came out of nowhere. I just got a call one day saying, would you, would you like to be uh, coaching The Voice, or would you be interested in having a meeting about it? And then I went, went and met the team there, and I was, I was all in after nice. speaking to them. And it's, so, it's such a good experience. I got very lucky with the coaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it would have been awkward if I didn't get on with any of them. And we had to like create some sort of fake friendship on TV. <laughs> but, um, on and off camera, myself, Blake, Kelly and Chance are just having <laughs> such a laugh. Our text chain is... Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's dangerous. Well, they, they, they <laughs> seem like a good bunch. They really yeah. do. It seems like a bunch of people like, again, I, I, I know it's on TV, but it kind of does feel as if we can all be friends and, and kind of hang out. Yeah. At least that's how it comes across. It's definitely like that. Like, it, it is. I was surprised, you know. Well, not surprised, but, you know, just, like, happy that it was the case. Like, yeah. everyone is just so fun. They, like, when, even when the, cam- when the cameras are on, when the cameras are off, it's the same thing. And that's that's what I want. That's, that's great, that's man. That's the way it should be. And the talent on the show this year is just... Tell me, yeah, for real. Off the scale, yeah. Like, I was kind of waiting for, like, these kind of voices that make your ears perk up a little mm-hmm. bit and, like, give you goosebumps and can are, like, good at telling stories. Because mm-hmm. all the big singers would go with, like, Kelly. You know, because, oh, yeah. you know, to be fair, if I could sing like that, I'd probably get Kelly. Listen, don't show. underestimate <laughs> you, though. You know, they don't <laughs> underestimate you. Um, and then, like, the country folk kind of lean towards Blake, of course. Mm-hmm. So um, I was just sitting there going, right, where, where, this is where I slot in. Like, go for singers that, the type of stuff that I would listen to. Right. Um, and it's crazy how, how young a lot of these people are and how sure. gifted they are. Like when I when I think of myself on the X Factor back in the day, it was like, the talent level is not the same. It, to the, these kids these days are different. Right. Different. No, I, you know, I, I would agree. Mm. Um, so I, I have two daughters mm. and uh, I see a lot of their friends and what they're doing these days. Yeah. And, I, and I hear from parents mm. and I see the way parents are raising their kids. Yeah. So I agree that there's so much more out there. Yeah. There's there's tutors. There's people that can teach kids how to, you know, how to, how to sing and everything, play instruments. Yeah. So I agree yeah. that talent level these days are a little bit different yeah. than what it was. 100%. Yeah. And you were seeing it on The Voice. Like, I see it every day myself. I'm yeah. Like, for instance, there's this like really young kid on on my team. And yeah, he could win the thing, and he's like, much, he, you think you were talking to a thirty year old, and he's like half that. <laughs> it's crazy. It, it is crazy. I don't know where they get it from, yeah, man. It's great. Uh, so what's it like? If, if I don't know if anybody has you know performed any of your songs on the Voice, have mm. they done that? No. What would that have been like? So if somebody broke out and they start doing one of your songs, is that tough for you as an artist to hear them do a rendition of your song? I'm glad they didn't because I think that's that's a hard thing to do. What if I don't like the way they sing it? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure I'll I'm sure I'll cross that bridge, you know, at some point. Right, eventually. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's like uh it's that that'd be weird. Like I'd obviously enjoy it. Yeah. But then I'd probably be expected to like have to put them on my team. Right. What do you think? That's right. Yeah. You can't be like, I don't want you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Thanks for saying my song, but goodbye. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's not great. Uh, to be honest, like the decision making in general yeah. is very tough. Like, okay. I didn't realize, you know, I think like people sometimes watch these shows and think, ah, oh, they just sit there and they get told what to do. And they, they, Yeah. Well, we don't know. Yeah. yeah. I swear to God. It's like, there's that red button, press it whenever you accumulate a team of however many and then you have to like put them in battles put them in pairings whittle your team down to a certain number but you have to make the decisions on the spots on the spot like looking at them and go you're coming through and you're not it's like 
when, and when you get close to them and you're picking songs every week for their performances right. and you get to know them as people and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden they're just going home. So you're really hands on then, and yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. I asked, like I asked, how how, how hands on do people get? And and they were like, well, uh, Ariana was like best what? friends with all of hers, and she was like texting them and everything. <laughs> yeah. And then like some 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 coaches are too busy in their yeah. own music thing, and they don't do it as much or want to but can't. And I was like, yeah, well, while I'm going, I'll just like, give me an email address, gotcha. you know, and I can just talk to them every day and we became really became really close with them that's so that's really cool man i you know i, I never knew that as an outsider just watching it on television mm. i i just never knew but uh hey listen man thank you so much uh you know i i could sit here and talk to you for another hour yeah, I, know. I know you got <laughs> listen there's a lot of big people around here all having eyes on us so i'm getting the wrap-up signal which is okay i'm, I'm good with all that yeah you, right that's the, wrap-up, well, the, yeah. the helicopter comes out you're... you know you never know the kind of relationship you're gonna have when you you know sit down with an artist yeah. from time to time and I just think like it was it was really nice. I yeah, felt like yeah. I had good chemistry here with you, and I can just sit here and talk forever. But uh, let's go on a date. All the- <laughs> <laughs> that, what you know, chemistry I'm, this is? On that note, there you go. All right, so the show is coming out uh, June 9th. June 9th, there you go. And of course, the single uh, "Heaven" is out already, mm-hmm. and uh, you can head over to uh, nahorn.com and you can actually see the video there, mm-hmm. listen to it, and uh, everything Nahorn is right there for you. So thanks so much, man. I do appreciate. Thank you. It. Great to see you. I mean it for real. Thank yeah, you very yeah, much. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Carolina with Greg T in the morning on 103.5 KTU.